two weeks ago, do y'all remember what we went over? Like the last maybe a uh, couple months, we've been going over the Moedim, God's appointed times, the feast, right? So far, we've gone over number one. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna re rehearse this until we get it down. Okay, number one is Passover, right? That's the first week. There's seven. Okay, Passover. We went over Passover, and then right after Passover goes into unleavened bread, right? Then unleavened bread is first fruits, and of course. Those represent, you know, the, the resurrection of, of Christ, the death of Christ. Um, the, and then 50 days later is what? The Feast of, yes, we can go by two names, Shavuot or the Feast of Pentecost, right? Okay. All right, we're going to get it down. Maybe we should, like, put, like, a board right here and have them all, like, so y'all see them. You're like, oh, yeah. Okay. So those are the four feasts in the spring, right? Now we're starting with the first feast of the fall feast, and that is the feast of trumpets, right? Shafars, or Yom, Yom Teruah. Everyone could say with me, Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah. Okay, so that's what we're going over today. Let me give it a shot. Yeah. See? What is that? It's getting ready, preparing for battle, right? Okay. And let's see, I got another one here. So uh, eventually, if anyone wants to, like, maybe after church, give, give it a shot because it's not as easy as it looks. I make it look easy, but it's not that easy. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Okay, let, let's, get, let's get started. The Feast of Trumpets. In the Bible, God gave his people special days to remember and celebrate every year. The Hebrews, uh, these were called holy days, which we call today holidays. So holy kind of derives from holiday holy holly so obviously they're holy days we call them holidays and they are called they're part of the moedim okay the moedim means god's appointed times these are his feasts these are his festivals okay the purpose of these days is to remember what god did in the past right like like uh passover and shavuot and all these things and what he's going to fulfill in the future Basically, today's feast is very prophetic. It's really going to get a lot into like even like revelation and the coming of the Lord because this feast hasn't uh, fulfilled yet, right? The Feast of Trumpets. Okay, um, let's see. So, and, and we know it, the Day of the Trumpets or Yom, uh, Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah is celebrated on the seventh, on the first day of the seventh month. We find that described in two passages. So, let's go to Leviticus 23. In your Bibles or on your um, devices, Leviticus 23, and we are going to read 23 through 25, and this is going to show exactly where God is telling his people to celebrate the Feast of Yom Teruah, right? So it's not like something that, and, and, and a quick note before we, we start. And I, 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 I said this two weeks ago and about all the feasts. A lot of times uh, you might be maybe even thinking, why in the world are we going over some Jewish feast that they did in the Old Testament? That doesn't really relate to us anymore, right? Like, we're, we're part of the church. And, you know, the more I study, and, and we'll kind of go into depth a little bit about this. But, you know, today, and I was actually talking to Isaiah about this uh, last night, and I was like, it's it, it, it's it's crazy how much I don't know crazy is the right word, but it's uh, so miraculous how much the enemy and Satan sometimes deceives us as a church, because we as a church have gotten, have gotten to the point that we celebrate all sorts of holidays, right? In church, right? We celebrate what well, they call it Easter, uh, they celebrate uh, Christmas, they celebrate, uh, <laughs> a lot of church celebrate Halloween or Hallelujah Night or whatever they call it, uh, celebrate Mother's Day, you know, Father's Day. We have women's events, we got men's events, we got events for the youth, we got events, uh, just think of anything. Nowadays in some churches, they got events for everything, you know, you just think of something, there's an event for it. And, all, and I'm not saying the, a lot of these things are wrong. Maybe the pagan ones, which one day we'll kind of go over, probably are wrong. Like especially Halloween, Easter, and maybe we'll get into Christmas a little. But 
I'm not saying they're wrong to have these events. What I'm saying is that in Scripture, our Father told us to celebrate and to be aware of His appointed feast, His basically His parties, right? And we don't know anything about it today. How many churches do you know know about the different uh, feast and appointed times? No, it's not. It's not even taught, right? We don't even know about them. Yet we know about all these other feasts. So just imagine how God our Father is, and He told us and gave us a commandment through Scripture, because He didn't pay. He didn't put in Scripture you need to celebrate uh, Easter or Christmas or anything. It's not in the Bible. He said, "Celebrate my seven appointed times." And he probably looks at us sometimes, I feel, and he's like, we're celebrating all these other things except the one, the seven feasts that you actually told us to do. That's just something to think about, right? The, one, the, the things that he literally told us to do, his holidays, holy days, and we don't even know about them, yet we do all these other things. And sometimes I do think that it's a failure on part of the church, on part of Christianity, on part of a lack of of knowledge sometimes because a lot of us never heard of them right but scripture does say that uh we will perish for lack of knowledge right scripture says that we will perish for lack of knowledge we don't how many want to perish here we don't want to perish okay leviticus 23 and we're going to do verses 23 through 25 and it talks about yom teruah feast of trumpets and it says amen and the lord I'll say, Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with a blast of trumpets and a holy convocation. You shall do no ordinary work, and you shall present a food offering to Lord, to the Lord, to Yahuwah, right? Numbers 29, 1 through 6, and you don't have to look for this one if you don't want to, but it also says in Numbers 29, 1 through 6. Two witnesses. We've got two witnesses, so it's definitely something we need to look look at. It says, on the, it's basically going to say the same thing as Leviticus, right? On the first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no ordinary work. It is a day uh, for you to blow the trumpets, and you shall offer a burnt offering f- uh, for a pleasing aroma to the Lord, to Yahuwah. Amen. So right here, in Scripture, in two parts of, uh, of Scripture, in Numbers and Leviticus, God is telling the people of Israel that they need to do these things. It's basically kind of like a Sabbath, right? You, uh, you, uh, on the first day so uh, of, the, of the year, I uh, know, the, the first day of the seventh month. The reason I say the first day of the year is because today tradition is, uh, how many have heard of uh, um, Rosh Hashanah? Have you anyone ever heard of that? Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah? Well, basically, that's the Jewish traditional New Year. Like, their New Year starts in the seventh month, like September, October. It changes. But uh, in Scripture, actually, the New Year we know is 14 days before Passover, which is usually around uh, uh, January, February, like March, somewhere right there. Okay? So, the first day of the seventh month, okay? God is telling us to make sure that we practice this day. Amen. So, this day is a day of rest, of giving an offering to God, blowing the trumpets. I'm going to try it again. <laughs> oh. Man, I think there's something stuck in this one. That's my excuse. <laughs> of blowing the trumpets on the day of holy convocation and memorial and it and, and, you know, the, the interesting thing about this, and I, I think it's interesting. Hopefully, little by little, y'all start thinking it's interesting, too. But out of all the days, uh, the Feast of Trumpets is actually a little bit more mysterious, right? Uh, because there's not really a set meaning for this feast. Like, you know, like um, Passover uh, basically is a memorial to uh, represent when the people are coming out of Exodus, right? They're coming out of Egypt which also also represents the Passover when uh, they are going to uh, uh, sacrifice Christ, okay? And then we have like, um, you know, uh, Shavuot. That represents, um, you know, the marriage 
uh, getting the Ten Commandments. Remember on Mount Sinai, Moses is, is up there and he's getting the Ten Commandments. And basically God is saying, you are my people now. Israel is my people. It was, a me- it was basically a wedding. It was a wedding. And, and the wedding and the, and the Ten Commandments were basically God's laws and saying, these are my wedding vows. Follow them. If you break them, you're in trouble. Okay? Just like any marriage, right? These are my vows. If you don't, you know, love me and you don't, uh, you know, stay with me and you go off, then you're in trouble, right? Okay, Sukkot. We haven't got into this feast. This is going to be the last one, but it's a memorial, of, uh, you know, for the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. But Scripture really doesn't give us a clear meaning about Yon Teruah. Like, what do, why are we celebrating? What is the purpose of this holiday, of this feast? Well, if we all remember two weeks ago, how many were here two weeks ago when we went over the first part of, of the Feast of Trumpets? Okay, so a lot of y'all weren't here, so it, I will kind of like uh, have to go over a couple things from last uh, two weeks ago. Basically, the Feast of Trumpets is a, is a prophetic feast. I mean, we do it now, but it's a rehearsal. And it's an alarm, right? Thus, the trumpet. You know, like in, in, in the Old Testament, a lot of times when they were going to go into battle, what would they do? They'd blow the trumpets, right? And they would blow the, the shofars, and, and then uh, people would, you know, get ready, right? Because we're going to battle. It's a warning. It's an alarm, okay? So the Feast of Trumpets, uh, uh, Yom Teruah, say it with me again, Yom, Yom Teruah. Yeah, uh, Y-O-M and then Teruah. Yom Teruah is an alarm. Teruah also is connected to the fearsome day of the Lord, uh, said uh, also written in the book of Joel. Remember that I told y'all that this is a very prophetic holiday, a very prophetic feast, because really it hasn't been fulfilled yet. They practice it, but they are still waiting for what this feast represents. We know because Christ has come already, you know, our Savior, he came as a humble lamb, but we know that he is going to come next time as the conquering warrior, right? And that is what we're waiting for. When this, I believe, and many scholars and, and have believed that this is going to be the day when you hear those shofars blowing, it's going to be the day of the Lord, you know? And that is a prophetic thing that we need to wait for. Uh, for example, let's go to Joel uh, chapter 2. And uh, we're going to read verse 1 and 2. Joel chapter 2. And there's a lot of prophecy in actually in the book of Joel. If you just read that one, it's, it's kind of neat. Uh, relating to like a revelation and, and different prophecies that are coming. Uh, how many are inter- How many are kind of uh, like interested in like different prophecies and stuff like that? I know when I was younger, I used to like to like to listen to like them talk about revelation and like the antichrist and all the end of the world stuff i don't know it's kind of exciting you know kind of like what miguel was talking about last week we don't we tend to skip over the books like leviticus and numbers and you know those get about the genealogies and names i was going for the revelation well the book of joel has a lot just like the book of daniel and isaiah okay uh joel 2 it says blow a trumpet in zion sound an alarm a teruah on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord, the day of Yahuwah, is coming, and it is near, a day of nar- darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Joel goes, he is basically saying, get ready, people of Israel, because a day is coming. When you hear those shofars, the day of the Lord is coming, a, a, a you know, a day of darkness, a day of the, the world trembling and stuff like that. Uh, it's an alarm. The Teruah is a sound to wake up the people. It's to wake us up, to get back to God's ways. Remember last two weeks ago, we were talking a lot about atonement and repentance because a lot of times uh, we as brothers and sisters, we are trying to walk in God's path, right? We're trying to do the right thing. But a lot of times, one of the things that uh, Yon uh, Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, is very big on repentance. Because the next feast that comes up is actually the Feast of Atonement. Uh, the Feast of Atonement is basically when uh, the high priest, once a year, would go into the temple and enter into the Holy of Holies 
and give a sacrifice uh, an atonement for the sins of Israel. Okay, so uh, it is an alarm. It's for us to get ready. We need to repent. We need to ask other people forgiveness. That was the thing that we were talking about. Remember last uh, two weeks we went over the, uh, the um, uh, what was the name of the, the parable that we went over? Do you all remember? Um, the unforgiving servant. Do you remember that? Where he, uh, the king forgave him for his debt. He had a huge debt. And then the, the servant was like, no, king, you know, I'm sorry. You know, forgive me, forgive me. I'll pay you back. And he said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I forgive you. Go off. But then that guy went and he found one of his servants and he's like, hey, you owe me this much money. And, and then that guy, his servant was like, no, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'll pay you back. But instead of him forgiving him, he pretty much like strangled him and said, you know, you're going to prison until you uh, till you pay me back. And I'm summarizing it quick. And then the uh, the people saw him. They told the king and then the king brought that servant back and he says, I can't believe you. I forgave all your your debt. And then you go off and do that. You know, a lot of times we are in that same position. You know, God forgave us for our sins. You know, he gave us life for us everything that we've done and sometimes we won't forgive our brother and sister for certain little things that they've done you know and a lot of times and i said before and they're probably the ones that are wrong i agree they're usually it's usually the other people that are wrong right <laughs> but sometimes we still have to ask forgiveness like i'm mean, not ask for forgiveness but we need to forgive them we need to forgive them um uh, I, I think it's very important that we forgive them. Sometimes if we can't get to the point where you actually see that person forgive it, I would just even say, lip it. No, no, I forgive you in my heart. <laughs> you know, and then one day maybe you'll get to that point. But you remember, you do that not for them. You're doing it for yourself, right? I, I forgive that person not for the, for the benefit of that person. I am forgiving that person because I do not want that content, that that uh, uh, wrath in my heart. Amen? That was what we went over last week. So, uh, traditionally, uh, the Day of Trumpets, uh, 10 days after that, goes into the next feast. We'll, we'll go over Yom, It's called uh, Yom Kippur. How many have heard of Yom Kippur? I'm telling you, we don't, we, don't, we don't really know this stuff, right? Churches do not teach this. But Yom, Yom Kippur is basically the Feast of... Uh, of uh, atonement, okay? And usually the, the, the 10 days leading up to this were uh, 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 repentance and fasting and, and doing all these things because they knew that that priest, that high priest, was going to go into the temple and make atonement, and they wanted to get right with the Lord. Now, I know today we should always be ready, right? Because God can come at any time. We, we know that. But I'm just going to let you all in on a little little hint that probably sometimes we don't know see a lot of the great things that have happened in scripture always and if you look it's a pattern it always happens on these days it happens on passover it happens on shavuot on, on pentecost trumpets see i believe that when god comes when our lord and savior comes his second coming it's gonna be on this day now you're you're saying well, but wait a minute the word says we don't know the day or the hour. That's true. We don't know the exact day or hour, if you want to say that necessarily. And, and you can actually get into that, and there's more detail in that. But we know the season. We know around the day. And I can guarantee, I almost can guarantee you that when the coming of the Lord comes, it's going to be probably close to the day of trumpets. Okay? So just get ready. So when September's kind of you know mid-september and early october is there we, we probably really be need to be like okay well i need to get ready i i need to start probably doing a little better i, I can't be watching this uh, season of uh, whatever anymore because it's probably not the best for me but anyways get ready it's an alarm now it is also a time of rejoicing a sound of rejoicing the trumpets right let me blow it again Let's see if anyone's asleep Hey, that was better. I, I'm trying to get it to where it sounds like, Ooh. that's the way it's supposed to sound, right? 
Yeah, it's getting there. Okay. You're telling me it's a day of rejoicing? Wait a minute. I thought it was a day of an alarm, of a warning, of getting ready. But it's an also a day of rejoicing. I'm going to read real quick. Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praises. Say, say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. So, it is a time for mourning. It's an alarm. It's a war. It's a time for like oh trembling and for those who are not ready. But for those that who are ready, hallelujah, it's going to be a time of rejoicing. So those that are already, when we hear that shofar and we hear that trumpet and the thunder and all that, we're not going to be scared, right? We're not going to be like, oh, no, oh, no, I need to get on my knees and get ready. No, we're going to be ready. We're going to be joyful. But we're like, finally, yes, our Lord, our uh, uh, Lord, uh, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus, the Christ is coming for us finally i don't have to pay my bills no more and this and that you know <laughs> so it is going to be a time of rejoicing but if you're not ready it's going to be a time of trembling uh it's a sound of joy for god's people uh so the feast of trumpets yantrua has been said by many that this could be the start like i said the second coming a lot of you know the second coming it could be the rapture uh the second exodus the gathering or the day of the Lord. So it has a lot of names, but probably most people know it by the rapture, right? The second coming of the Lord. Um, so we'll just, we'll go with that. Uh, in Joel 2, 15 through 16, it says, Blow the trumpets in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children. Even the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. That is the day of the Lord. That is when God is going to come for his people, his chosen people, right? Now, who is his chosen people? He set apart. He set apart Israel, right? When we accept Christ, Yeshua, we become part of Israel, right? We, the church is Israel, right? The, uh, it was founded by, you know, in, in Jesus and, and Paul and, and Peter and all that, we become part of the cultivated olive tree. Amen. Now, can you imagine the sound of the trumpet or shofar? I, I, I think it's going to be a shofar. I think it's going to be like something like this, but like something like that angels have, right? Can you imagine on that day what it's going to be like? Just think about it for a minute. You know, uh, we don't know, and we don't even know what the situation is going to be during that time. But it's going to be in days, right? And I can guarantee you it's probably not going to be nice and good. But imagine the sound of that alarm, you know, the terror that's going to happen when you hear the heavens up there and you hear that, right? Imagine the sound, the terror. I mean, have you, have you ever heard those uh, warning signs on TV when... Uh, uh, how do they go? This is a test. That, right? I hate those things, right? You know, I think now they do it on your phone now, too. But I remember when I was little, they used to do that. And, man, you could be playing or something like that. And then it would be like, burnt, burnt, and then, and it would be like in bars or something like that in the old days. Man, that would scare me, right? It was like, oh, my God, this is the end of the world, <laughs> you know, or something. But then it would be like, this is only a test of the national broadcast system or whatever. Well, Think about that, but a thousands of thousands of times more. I mean, it's going to be a big old siren in the air, right? Um, uh, I, I think, and I'm going to get off a little bit here, but I believe that the Feast of Trumpets, like I said, is very linked to the end of days. Uh, I, I think I mentioned two weeks ago about predictive programming. Do y'all know what that is, predictive programming? Basically, it's um, it's pretty much like brainwashing in a sense. It's like, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, they, they put out things. They, they do it all the time. Like, it's, it's very good for advertisement. They put out little things here and there in magazines and movies and stuff like that. And then little by little, you're doing it or you accept them without even knowing, right? It's, it's pretty, pretty uh, a common practice. Well, for example, Hollywood, I believe that Hollywood books and all these things have been preparing us a little bit, a little by little for this day. And you're like, what? What do you mean? Aren't Hollywood and them all messed up and they're like Luciferians and stuff? Yeah, I think they're pretty messed up. But that doesn't mean they don't know the Bible and they don't know scripture. In fact, the scripture even said that the devil and his angels and demons know the Bible very well. A lot probably better than us. Uh, but predictive programming. Think of what we have been kind of brainwashed since, I don't know, the last hundred years. Science fiction, aliens, oh snap, aliens, flying saucers, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, all these things that have, you know, pretty much, when I was younger, it was still pretty much science fiction, right? But now, it's not been too long ago where NASA's come out and the news and stuff like that, and they pretty much have come out and said, well, we're not alone anymore, right? There is aliens out there, there is UFOs, right? How many have heard that, or is that news to y'all? Like, if I were to tell you right now, it, do you believe that there is aliens out there? How many would raise their hand and say yes? How many think that there's, like, aliens or other life forms out there? Huh? No? Or do y'all think it's just fantasy or science fiction? I mean, the government's telling us that it's true now, right? It, it's a deception. Exactly. It is a deception. It is predictive programming. Hollywood has been doing this for a while. In fact, I'm going to prove it to y'all right here. I'm going to prove it with YouTube. Now, there was this mo one movie that came out about 15 years. Maybe, uh, I don't know how many years ago. It's, it's an older movie. Tom Cruise. Anyone ever see the movie War of the Worlds? Uh, I'm surprised Juan's not here. I remember he used to love that movie. You seen War of the Worlds? Okay. Remember in that movie when the aliens came down and uh, they made this like really scary sound, right? Do y'all remember that? Dude, how many have seen War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise? You haven't seen it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Well, I have a little, like, uh, it's like 10 seconds or whatever. It's a clip, and it's basically, you can't see it, but it's basically, if I had a TV here, eventually we'll get one uh, where you can see the alien coming down to the to the earth, and he plays, and they, 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 they have this sound, right? I'm going to play it. that sounds scary or what? Um, basically, that is a shofar sound. You can't tell me that's not a shofar sound. It's like, right? That is what they're, so basically what they're saying, and, uh, and just to answer the questions, there is not life on other planets. There is not aliens and things like that. If you want to consider angels, Aliens, because they're not literally from Earth, they're extraterrestrial, then maybe. But it is a deception by Satan for us to believe. So when we hear those shofars and we hear the coming of the Lord, and it's going to try to trick the people, try to trick the church into thinking, these are the bad guys. This is Thanos and they have those aliens, right? They're coming down. What are we going to do? What does the Bible tell us? that happens it says the world is going to make war with god because those are the bad aliens right imagine if if, 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 if you know if you, those that that are taken from the from the ground right they're taken in the second coming right where the gathering with the rapture right you you're going to be seeing people you know flying off the earth or whatever i don't know how it's going to happen exactly but you're going to be like oh no that's not good they're getting abducted, you know, or whatever. They're getting taken. You don't want to get taken, right? No. In this situation, you do want to get taken. Because if you're not getting taken, you're going to be in a lot of trouble, right? Amen. Do I, am I making myself kind of clear, right? Uh, I know this is like kind of going off a little. But at the same time, it might not be too much. I believe that Hollywood, books, cartoons, 
uh, now with the internet, have been leading us to this deception, have been leading us to believe that when God comes, it's going to be the enemy. When God comes and those shofars go, it's going to be aliens or something like that, and we don't want to be taken, and we're going to run away. Let me read Isaiah 24, 17 through 18, just to kind of let you know how it's going to be on that day. Terror and the pit and the snare, snare is like a trap, are upon you, O inhabitant of earth. He who flees at the sound of terror shall fall into the pit, and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are open, and the foundations of earth will tremble. That is prophecy telling what is going to happen on that day. It is not going to be a good day or week. Um, uh, also in Revelation it says, I was in the spirit of the uh, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me the sound of a loud trumpet. Right? And that's basically uh, the the coming of the Lord. So what what does this have to do with Yom Teru? Let's get back to that. What is all this that I'm talking about? All these feasts, what does it have to do about the coming of the Lord? It is an alarm. It is a day for us to get ready. Amen. We have to get ready. How are we? How do you prepare for something? You know, how do you prepare for an exam? Or how do you prepare if you're going to be in like a drama or something like that? You practice. You rehearse it. That is why God gave us these feasts. That is why God gives us his laws. So we can read them and we can rehearse them. So when that day happens, when, when uh, like they say, all right, action, it's happening. We're not caught off guard. It's like, I don't know my lines. You know, I don't know my cues. What do I do? What do I stand? What, what do I say? No, you're going to be right on the mark. That is what these are about. They're about rehearsal, rehearsal rehearsing what is going to happen. And I believe the Feast of Trumpets is a future one that we should be ready. So when you, when, when that day happens, and then you're going to be like, oh, I remember this. I remember when uh, uh, Eastman Jr. was uh, talking about this. We need to get ready. Oh, my goodness, I'm not ready. I'm in trouble. You know, you're going to know. Or, or no, but I know everybody here is going to be ready. Amen? All right. So getting back to God's appointed times, that is why I stressed for you to look into these, to practice them, to, to look at the, uh, God's feast. Even though we have been deceived, even though that churches don't teach it today, but Scripture does. And we should be always base, base our faith on Scripture. So, it's going to be the day of the Lord, the return of Yahuwah. Yahuwah will pour out His Spirit. And Yahuwah, God, will judge the nations. The great gathering. Let's see. Um, I'm going to skip over a little because uh, I only have three minutes. So, I believe that celebrating and practicing the Moedim, God's appointed times, are very important for followers of Christ. It is our Father's way of preparing us for that great day. So no excuses. So what do we do then? What do we do with Yon Turo? How do we practice? Well, in Scripture it says, Observe a day of solemn rest. Do not do any work. That's for the day of uh, trumpets. Proclaim a memorial about signed into trumpets, the shofars. And present a food offering to God, to Yahuwah, and present a burnt offering to Yahuwah, to God. Obviously, uh, we do not offer uh, and condone the sacrifices of animals. <laughs> we don't do that today. Why? Because it's no longer, we're no longer able. Uh, there's no uh, temple. There's no priesthood, Levitical priesthood. There's no tabernacle. So that is why today, even the people in Jerusalem and stuff don't have sacrifices, Okay. And just so you know that I'm not just making this up, I'm going to read Leviticus 17, 4 real quick. And it says, Any Israelite who sacrifices an ox, a lamb, or a goat, and the camp outside of it, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tent of meetings, tent of meetings is basically like what, what Moses used before the temple, okay? Uh, to present it as an offering to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. That person shall be considered guilty of bloodshed. They have blood and must be cut off from their people. 
So do not do that. If there's not a temple, there's not a tabernacle. And we know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the ultimate sacrifice. So today, we need to leave. What would I like y'all to leave today with? What do we do? How do we celebrate Yom Teruah? I believe that God intended us to get together, blow shofars. Uh, you know, you can have a feast or not. It's not technically a feast, even though they call it feast days. You don't it necessarily have to have a feast, kind of like on a Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Those are actual days where you're supposed to eat something. But here it's not. But it is a day of remembrance. It's a day to, to get ready to start asking the Lord for forgiveness of anything that we have done wrong. Uh, and just to, to remember that, hey, this day might happen. Uh, because, see, a lot of times we might think, oh, well, then I'm going to hear this announcement and I'm going to be ready. Kind of like the, if y'all seen the Left Behind series, like those shows and stuff like that, you know. I don't know if necessarily it's going to happen like that. I'm more of on the page of you are going to hear the trumpets and i don't know if it's going to be that at that moment because there's more trumpets it's not just one it's seven right so i believe that there's going to be days leading up maybe months i don't know where we're still going to be here before you get raptured or, or taken and, and a lot of times we'll be like oh even better then i might have time to repent and stuff like that right not necessarily we don't know what the world is going to be like at that time we could be at war. There could be power, power outages. And there could be a virus going on. We know how that is. We know that there can be mass panic. There could be famine. There could be disease and disaster, natural disasters, hurricanes, and all these things. All those things could be happening. And the last thing you're going to be doing is trying to study your Bible and, and, and getting ready. You're going to be trying to survive. That's why if you practice now, if you read the scripture now, you will be ready and be prepared. You will be like the, ten, the, the five virgins that had oil in their lamps and were ready. We want to be them. Because the other five, they were kind of ready, but not really. I mean, they were almost there, but they, they weren't. And that's the church today. The church is kind of ready, but they're not there yet. A lot of them. And that is why that day is going to be a very tragic day for most of the world. We have to prepare like I said before, uh, God's people perish for lack of knowledge. And how do we get knowledge? By studying his, his scripture. Uh, I had another verse to read, but I don't think we have time. I'm just going to finish here. So God, Yah God Yahuwah appointed times. His holy feast is a rehearsal of what has happened, has already happened, and what is yet to come. The Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, is designed for his people to be ready. It is an alarm to be vigilant of Jesus, of Jesus Yahuwah's coming. Let us come together as brothers and sisters and not be like the foolish virgins, right? But let us follow our Father with loving him. And how do we do that? How do we, how do we show our love? By following his commandments and being obedient. So I encourage you to celebrate Yom Teruah both that day to prepare for that final judgment and look forward also enjoy to that day when the king of kings returns and we can be rejoice the conquering king hallelujah let us stand and let us pray dear father creator of all things we worship you and we love you with all our heart we thank you father god for this opportunity that we could go over your scripture to be able to learn your feast days your god your appointed times that we can grow in knowledge and that we can rehearse father god these things are we know that are about to happen we know that you're coming is soon and we want to be prepared for that we ask father for your anointing for your holy spirit your ruha kodesh to fill our lives and to give us guidance and wisdom and direction for we know that narrow is the gate that is it that uh that leads to life but wide is the gate that leads to the destruction we ask all these things in your name to give us that way father god that we may follow you and we worship you in jesus name in yeshua's name we all say amen